You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. Here we are for, I guess, this is live stream Monday Night Live number five on the docket. Um, I'm actually pretty impressed with how consistent I've been with these, with the podcast and everything. I just wanted to kind of bring you guys some other content to have a little bit more engagement. Um, Pre-recording is so awesome for so many things, like for scheduling. It's amazing to be able to be able to schedule it with people because everyone has busy work schedules, especially at this level. You know, I really wanted Fishing the DMV to be about the local area, the regional. And these guys, you know, a lot of them aren't professional anglers where, yeah, I can get on a call at 10 a.m. and I'll be available. A lot of them have families. A lot of them work a nine to five job and fishing is just a passion. And with that said, that pre-recording is amazing for that. However, when it comes to fan engagement, it definitely makes it a little bit harder. And that's kind of why I wanted to kind of stay uh, consistent with these live streams. And so far. You know, we've been doing actually an amazing job. So while I get this new, this new sure, you can't see it, but you can see it kind of headphones. <clears throat> this is my second pair I've gone through, by the way. Hopefully these will actually work. Uh, and then can we also get a mic check by our audience here before we get a mic check before I bring Marty in? I want to make sure we all sound good here uh, and then before we do the pre-recording. Uh, so a couple things I wanted to go, <clears throat> housekeeping notes, just want to go over some things that we'll be talking about will be monster bass. Marty's relationship with Monster Bass. Uh, I was blessed enough because of Marty. Thank you, Marty, uh, to be able to come on that show, which was a lot of fun. We're going to be talking about the Bass Federation uh, team championship tournament that was on Lake Anna. They had that at Lake Anna in June after Memorial Day, which seems a little precarious to me because of the boating traffic. Like it's a great lake, but I don't know about that time frame. And then the Bass Masters, of course, they went to the Sabine. Uh, and I think they, they were bragging about catching, you know, 11 inchers. 44 pounds won it. Brock Mosley hailed us. Awesome. I was kind of rooting for Keith Poche. I thought it was kind of really awkward that he was on live stream with uh, with Bassmasters after they DQ'd him. It's like being stuck in an elevator with your ex-wife. So I thought that was hilarious. I was really hoping for a blow up there. Um, but you know what? Without further ado, let's bring in the man, the myth, the legend, <clears throat> Marty L. Lawson. Marty, how are you hey, doing? Hey. Glad to have you back on the show. Yeah, I'm doing great. Doing great. Still losing weight, but uh, yeah, uh, about three weeks ago, I was uh, the my uh, my wife, Doctor Google. She uh, she did a diagnosis and determined that I had shingles. So as you get older, you're more susceptible to it. And uh, yeah, I had it, and uh, I'm over it now. But I tell you what, you know, you see the commercial. Get the shot. <laughs> so if you've had chicken pox, go get this shingle shot. Because I'll tell you what, I had it on my head. And the only way I can compare the pain is like, okay, so most guys, usually women don't do this because they're smarter. But how many times has a guy gone to get something out of a vehicle and you hit the door frame of your car with your head? Um, and you get that immediate pain. Well, that type of pain is what radiated for about two and a half weeks. Uh, it's not fun. And I recommend. <laughs> so Dr. Marty says, go get the shingles vaccine because you don't want to deal with this stuff. It was bad. It was bad. I, so we're, we're also going to give you medical advice here on this show now. So we're branching out to a multitude you know? of factors. <laughs> so, yeah, like, but uh, I've been doing really good, really good. Uh, that is that is awesome. And then something else, you know, thank you so much for for getting me on. I guess we got to set the table. Uh, talk about Monster Bass a little bit, who they are, how you got contacted with them, and then we the lead up to how I got on the show. Let's okay, see. so um, Monster Bass, the owner Rick Petrie, he does a a live show on Facebook, um, usually every Thursday night at seven o'clock. Um, and he has pros on and he has uh, just different different people on. Um, about two weeks before you came on, he actually had the guy that was developing the Monster Bass fishing rods. And I'll tell you what, that guy was like, he was an engineer uh, through and through. The guy that he had on there was, uh, he worked for Team Daiwa over there in Japan. 
for about 15 years and then came back and and Monster Bass hired him to make their rods. So really special, really great guy. Um, but Rick does his broadcast every Thursday and it's a call in show. So they have a guest and people can call in and ask questions or give opinions or whatever of the guy, the guy or girl that's on the show. And uh, I've been a consistent call in for quite some time. <clears throat> and push come to shove, I kept calling and they used to do the super chat where you could donate money to a good cause that Monster Bass was supporting. And then Rick came on one of his shows and he said, you know, the problem with that is if you do, if you donate $20 through, you know, the Facebook super chat and YouTube, yep, 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 yep. I know where you're going with this. He said you end up getting, you know, Monster Bass ends up getting like $5 and 72 cents out of that 22 bucks. So I got thinking about that and I approached them, Monster Bass. Uh, Rick and his right hand man Rafi um, to find out a better way to do that. So we came up with the idea of Monster Bass Cares. And what that is, is a way that people can actually donate money and that through a Venmo account, it goes to its own separate account. And then I have access to it. Uh, Rafi has access to it. And then what we do is we take that money and I go and find these uh, veteran organizations that are holding bass fishing tournaments. And what I do is I use that money from Monster Bass Cares to purchase Monster Bass boxes, which then I send free to these veteran tournaments. So it's uh, I've supported three so far. One was the Fallen Outdoors uh, that was at uh, Lake Monroe. Indiana. We just did another one called uh, Talking Rock Outpost. They did a veterans tournament at Talking Rock, Georgia. <clears throat> and the next one we're going to be doing is the Fallen Outdoors um, Oregon chapter. And that's that's really the fallenoutdoors.com is really a big organization. And um, I'm in discussions right now with Monster Bass about really teaming up with them because they have over 2,200 volunteer. Tw I'm sorry, 22,000 volunteers across the nation, and they hold these tournaments so they can bring veterans on board these boats to go out and fish in a tournament. And <clears throat> I think that's going to be a great organization to support. Um, so. They do have a bunch of sponsors already. MLF is one of them. And awesome. and and uh, recently, uh, Monster Bass has just teamed up with MLF. So that's we got a lot going on there, a lot of synergy there. So I think that's going to be a process that we're going to move on, um, is getting Monster Bass more in line with the, the Fallen Outdoors. That is a, uh, a 501C organization and it's just uh looks like it's going to be pretty good in doing this i got to i i had to make a trip out to california oh darn uh, for for work for work um and that was that was hard but uh uh i stopped and met rick and rafi in person had lunch with them and discussed a lot of different ideas and uh yeah so a lot of good things going on for me through monster bass and monster bass cares that uh, i'm going out and supporting these things and on your show i'll let you know also if there are anyone that is listening and they have a veteran or first responder type tournament coming up in the area because i haven't done one for the dmv um if there is a veteran tournament coming up anytime soon and you would like some support some sponsors um please reach out to me um at uh yeah marty lawson 1982 at gmail i'm not afraid to give my email address out because if i don't like you i just throw you in a junk folder <laughs> but uh yeah please reach out to me i i'd love to hear what you got going on and if we can we're gonna try and support you with something um 
And, and then Whether like always, link in the episode description, guys, just to make sure we get this in, link in the episode description to the Venmo information. And I also will on the re-upload, this will be re-uploaded to Apple, Spotify, iHeart, and YouTube this Wednesday. I'll put all of Marty's contact information. So if you do have a tournament coming up, you'll be able to get that. Yeah, just reach out to me. And I, you know, the other, the other good thing is once I send you this stuff, I don't care how you use it. I would like to get pictures back <laughs> of, uh, of people getting the boxes or whatever. But I mean, even if it's a small tournament and I send you one or two boxes to raffle to make more money for your organization, that's fine, too. I don't care how you do it, um, whether you want to raffle the boxes, give them away as prizes, um, you know, door prizes or part of the prize package for the winners. However, I I. That doesn't matter to me. I just want to be able to support the veterans, get the Monster Bass brand out there. Um, now they actually have a store on their website on uh, monsterbass.com. They're making fishing rods and uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, good shirts. I got one on here. Monster Bass. St stand on up here. Let me let me go. Let me go wide cam here for you. There you go. Yeah. Ooh, that's and slick, yeah. dude. Man, look yeah. at this pack. It's it's a hoodie, you know. Keep the sun off. Yeah, look at those pecs. You know, I think I might have mentioned it last time. Um, uh, I'm losing a lot of weight. You're looking much better. I started. I started at 257 pounds, and this morning I was 213. Um, so I'm losing a lot of weight. But you know, I realized something that I'm I'm old. I mean. <laughs> I'm, I'm when sorry. I was, when I was fluffy, I didn't have wrinkles because it was all filled in with fat. You mm -hmm. know, now that I'm losing all this weight, I'm getting like, what? I'm like, what is this neck thing? What is this? Now, I mean, now, now that you're the CFO of a monster bass, you can get some Botox. <laughs> Man, you'd be looking yeah. good. Uh, I don't need none of that. Uh, but yeah, everything's uh, everything's looking really good. And um, now I'd, I'd love to talk a little bit about local area here so i do have a question coming over instagram from big d um okay. not big d tv is it boating tournaments only or if it's a veteran kayak tournament will that will that be something that you guys go into as well veteran kayak i don't care if they do a veterans event at some stocked pond uh where they're fishing from shore I, it doesn't matter it can be kayak, it can be big shiny boat, it can be electric only, it can be, uh, you know, or even a, a, a veterans fishing derby where it's at a big park and everyone fishes from shore. Anything like that that's supporting veterans and first responders. Um, there's there's another group that I'm, I'm getting a hold of and it's called Fishing in the Dark. Um, that's a unique story there. And that's the other thing that I love about doing this is I get to talk to these veteran organizations, which are majority, majority of them are run by disabled vets. Um, this fishing in the dark is really something. It's two guys. I think they're down in South Carolina and they, they do it all themselves. Wow. Just two guys doing this type of stuff. So, you know, I just think we have a lot of people that are reaching out for our veterans and first responders that have been injured in the line of duty. And, you know, we, we all know the stories of PTSD and depression and, and things like that. And it's always a hard transition going from the military, your military career, where everything is, you know, you know what you're doing today, you know what you're doing tomorrow, you know what you're doing next week, you know what you're doing next month. Okay to transitioning to the civilian world where, <laughs> okay, I don't know what's going on tomorrow. You know, it, it's, it's very, you go from a very structured environment to an unstructured environment and it's, and it's hard. It's hard. And, and transition, especially, you know, wounded vets going through that transition also is, is it's not an easy thing. So yeah, I really love supporting the veterans and, and if anyone wants my information, like you said, you're going to you're going to upload my information. Um, and yeah. Reach out to me, please. I'd be more than happy to try and support. It's a match made in heaven, really, because of our location, you know, for people that 
are outside Virginia. I know I have a lot of listeners in in Tennessee, that Tennessee, Virginia area, you know, with, with especially the Fredericksburg area, you know, you have a lot of military braces, you have a lot of government contractors, things like that. And so I have, I've been blessed to work with um, Northern Virginia Kayak Association who have a lot of veterans. There's a lot of military people that live in this area. So that is such a match made in heaven to have you working with them. Yeah, I, I, it really is something. It's uh, just kind of open your eyes up to a lot of different things. And, and it's, there's opportunities out there to support the vets and, and first responders. So, you know, even if someone is looking to volunteer in our area, to support a veteran organization, a first responder organization, and it doesn't have to be just fishing. Please reach out to me because I am making contacts everywhere. And and if you just want to volunteer for something, hey, let me know. I will get you in touch with the right people so that you can volunteer to help out, however, how whatever way you want. Oh, hey, David Williams, that's a nice looking shirt. Yeah, hey, I think uh, yeah, I got the uh, got the uh, another one underneath it. See. Oh boy. Yeah. I mean, oh, there you go. Now that's all I'm taking off. <laughs> Thomas, unless you were here, you know. And that's why and that's why they, they get rid of the super chat feature. Yeah. Uh, and then we got Chris um, Chairwood. Love the the I love the vet love and taking care of the boys. USMC vet here. Hell yeah. Love yeah. it. I'm a Navy vet, Navy chief. Um and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's really cool that we're able to do this stuff. So this is just one way to we, that uh, I've come up to do it. And uh, like I said, I don't have anything scheduled in our area right now for uh, for supporting a veteran tournament. So if there are any out there, if anyone listen, man, my hat, look at that. Anyways, anyone out there listening, um, please feel free to reach out to me, and uh, I'll see what I can do to uh to help support but yeah i'm looking for something in our area um you know i do a lot of google searches trying to find you know i'll i'll do things like looking up veteran tournaments in july august september um because i need enough time i need enough lead time it's like anything else it's it's like any supply chain and when you think about it i have to i have to call the call the warehouse and get this stuff shipped via normal shipping methods which could be anything from fedex to postal service and all that and and if anyone online knows about buying fishing tackle or anything else you know unless you're amazon next day delivery it, sometimes it's going to take you know a week to 10 days for you to get something so i need that lead time um excuse me to make sure we have the the funds available and get the boxes and get them shipped out and all that so I'm really now looking at any tournaments in the July, August, September timeframe. Um, so if there are any in our area, please let me know. I, I'd be more than willing to, if you can get me in contact with the right people, I'd be more than willing to support with something. So that's a, that's a good thing. You know, we, we're, we're even talking about um, being able to support more in a different way, which is possibly just giving like a... <clears throat> a coupon code for X number of dollars so that you could go to the Monster Bass store and buy shirts like this, hats, whatever. Um, you know, you could also go in and buy a fishing rod where, you know, a coupon code for X amount of money. Um, and the other thing is Monster Bass does give a, uh, a veteran discount, uh, which is really cool. Uh, he's been doing that for a long time and he, this is a CEO of, of Monster Bats. He really does care about the vets. Uh, I go into a backstory, but that's not for me to tell. And uh, yeah, he, he really likes supporting the vets. So it's a good thing all the way around. Um, yeah, I'm going to have so. to do a role and get him on the show, actually, and do a little quick snippet of kind of like that whole deal and how you guys met. Because it's just fascinating, just all of that and like such a California presence he has, but also a lot of reach outside of California too, oh, which is amazing. Huge. Yeah. Um, I don't know this fishing with Gramps. He does, he has a YouTube channel and, and, uh, and Rick supports him, uh, cause he does a ton of stuff with veterans. Um, Alex Rudd, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard Alex Rudd, big kayak fishing. He's part of the monster bass team fishing with cotton. Uh, Oklahoma's worst angler, 
uh, Debo's fishing, uh, aggressively average anglers. Now, I'm throwing all these names out there. So <laughs> these names are getting more complex as you go yeah. on. <laughs> but I, I tell you, uh, I'm throwing these, I'm throwing these names out there. So you guys that are listening, you know, you can always go back and, and go, Hey, Marty mentioned this YouTube channel. And so all those people have YouTube channels and I have learned a lot just by watching the YouTube videos. You know, uh, I work and sometimes I have a little bit of downtime in between phone calls or meetings. I'll watch a, a, a you know, a 12 minute video on a new technique. Um, and it's great. You know, and then I have people like Thomas that say, you got to get one of these. You got it. Oh, what did you think of it? That thing is so awesome. I, I like it. I really like it. But um, there is an electric version now. Shut that's up. Very similar. Yes, I will. I will send you the link to that. Yes. Um, it does it. It pretty much does it for you, Thomas. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All you got to do is hold the line and feed it. And that's it. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, but this is yeah, this is uh, this is for tiny FG knot. Uh, you know, braid to, to, uh, fluorocarbon or monofilament. Dude, it's a great tool because to do that, it'd be really nice to have three hands, four hands as, as this would indicate, because these two pieces, well, these three pieces take up, you know, the line that you would end up having to hold to tie that FG knot properly. And this is, this is really good. It's a really neat tool. Thank you, Thomas, for turning me on to that. No. uh, Yeah. Dude, and I'll we'll go full screen while I keep talking here. No, it, it's so nice about like you find these little knickknack things that really do fill a void. You know what I mean? It's something like, oh, yeah. huh, that's a great idea. Why hasn't someone thought of that before? Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm going to do. You know, I, I, I haven't done some very many YouTube videos lately. I'm going to be cranking them out here soon, but I'm going to do product, uh, not really a product review, but more of a hey this is a neat product out here um and i bought it and i love it and i'm gonna endorse it i'm gonna you know i'm gonna throw stuff out there i mean even things like like this okay this is just you know in in the winter time when it's cold nasty and you need to do something with fishing this is this is just a uh it's an oiler for oiling your reels and stuff um very precise so you can you can do the ball you can do the bearings and everything and it's and it's made by dial and it's it's you know real oil in a in a tube like a pen so you can be very precise that's another thing that i mean i just find these things you know you you can see my wall behind me i i i find stuff that is so um, freaking cool. That is really cool. And then um, we got, let me get this back up here. Go split screen again. We got JR's fishing channel. Uh, what is that? JR, are you talking about the the Daiwa tool that he just pulled up or that the, or the uh, FG knot? Which one? Top? This one or this one? Yeah. And then just t- t- type in FG if it's FG. Uh, and then I can get, and I'll also send a link. I have that saved on my computer, so I can send that link. Uh, and then also, I think think i just found uh because i'm i'm one of the freshest googlers on this side of the mississippi uh i think i just found it let me get this up here for you yeah Boom. that's the new one yep exactly 17 bucks is not that bad to tie a knot actually that's no really- especially a really good knot um I've, I've had, uh, I've had, you know, 10, 12 pound fluorocarbon break off before that leader not even moves. Really? So, yeah. Yeah. Bucks bonafide. And guys, you can get that thing on Amazon. So this is the electric FG knot tire. Um, and then at TAC Warehouse, actually now, um, you can get the FG knot, the first generation, I think. I think Marty's, you, yours look like the second generation. Yeah, second but generation. Yeah, you can get that there. But no, that, yeah. that that's freaking cool. So I got to ask you before we get into the lake fishing report, pull some stuff off from behind you because you, Marty has one of the coolest, I mean, absolutely coolest, just tackle shops imaginable. It's like an, it's, it's amazing. It's like Cabela's. 
All right. So, you know, I can move the camera a little bit. Here, I'll go. Yeah. Or you can just grab something off the wall if you want and bring it. Well, you can see I, I got a lot of stuff. I actually have all those boxes up top. Um, but I, I, I'm a tackle junkie. Get that. Get, oh, get it. Adjust my camera again. All right. So I'm a tackle junkie and let me grab something here. And let me see what else we got up here. All right. So, you know, you, you get stuff delivered and it comes with uh, this foam. This is just that styrofoam stuff. And it's just a great way for you to uh, to hang baits or whatever. Uh, you know, if you got a spot where, where you can, uh, you know, tack this up on a wall or, 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 you know, I don't know, you got, you got your own little man cave and you can glue this to the wall. Um, it's just a, I just found it's a great way for me to just keep baits, you know, that I want to look at, or I get stuff and I take it out of the package and then I got to figure out what box I'm going to put it in. It goes here first. Mm. So that's a bunch of stuff there. Um, but I did, uh, <laughs> Let me grab this. This will this will make you happy. So I was at a fishing show and and I think it was I think it was a Fishers Fishersville show. Um, I ended up getting this wad of uh, big blade chatter baits. Ooh! At that at that event, I got I want to say two four six i got eight of them and i paid 20 bucks 20 bucks yeah yeah 20 bucks for eight of them can't beat that that's why you go to these fishing expos that's why you go to these small shows and stuff like that because a lot of times those guys want to get out of there and and just get rid of stuff um <clears throat> other things like i said uh monster bass has their own line of tackle now Everything from uh, tungsten weights, okay. Ooh. That's monster bass tungsten, tungsten drop shot weights, okay. Why is my my camera looks blurry, doesn't it? Uh, monster bass jigs, hmm. monster bass hot water. So, yeah, feel free to go to monster bass, check them out. I know I'm kind of giving them a lot of props, but I like them. Um, that's a, monster bass is a monthly subscription box. Okay. Um, you know, there's mystery tackle. There's, uh, what is this? I think six cents does one. Uh, what, what, the other what one? did all that start? And maybe that's a question I need to ask him just for more of like a, a big picture. Like, was it like bark box? The first company that did all these boxing stuff. Cause I'm trying to really pin on it. It just felt like we didn't do these box services. Then all of a sudden, like, Everyone does a box service. It's like, and my brain's like, when the hell did that even start? Was it before yeah. COVID? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Well before COVID, and um, you know, I, I, I'll tell you this. So I did my research, and and I looked at all these guys doing these unboxings and comparisons and all that type of stuff. But I actually went the other route. I did the actual consumer uh, benefits where I looked at prices and I looked at what was actually in the box and things like that. You know, there's, there's some services that all of a sudden you'll see a bait from some company that you've never heard of. Uh, and what that is, is it, it's, it's, it's just some cheap thing. That's probably uh, cheaper than what you could get at Walmart on the bargain bin. Um, and it's just a made up company with a cheap bait from, from either Korea or Singapore, or Japan or China. It's just knockoffs on stuff that's not very good. Um, but when I, when I looked at Monster Bass, um, the, the thing that I like about that subscription box is this. They send you stuff that one is paired to work together. So like when they sent me those tungsten drop shot weights, they also sent me 
drop shot hooks and KVD baits uh, from from striking, which is all matched up. OK, they, they don't just send stuff willy nilly. They will do things that are paired up. They did Tokyo rig. They did Carolina rig. They did drop shot. They did Ned rig. They've done uh, <clears throat> shaky head. Um, they do that. And then like the other thing they do is in every box actually comes a, a pamphlet. OK. Um, there's, there's a good picture right there. There's, there's Alex Rudd on the top yeah, that of that one. Yeah, and, and what they do is they send you this stuff, and, and then this pamphlet tells you how to use it. Okay, so there's a perfect thing right there. Um, this was done by Alex Rudd, um, you know, square bill type stuff. They have a QR code up here where you can scan it, and you can actually watch watch a video on it um so they 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 go into uh you know a, a very good production on how to use this stuff so it really is i i enjoy it um and then they have pros come in and this is where they do their live shows and and stuff hmm. like that and that's in the box um <laughs> so usually you get you know six to seven baits you get a pamphlet that tells you how to use everything. You get stickers. You get a golden ticket. And he does a golden ticket drawing. That's pretty you know, cool six, that he does that. Six numbers. Yeah. Golden tickets. He does six numbers every live broadcast. Um, and you can just win a bunch of stuff. I actually won it once. And I got a 14 by 14 by 14 square box. And they actually used duct tape to keep the thing closed. I opened it up, and I mean, my work table, Thomas, you saw it. It covered two-thirds of my work table with everything that they sent. Mm -hmm. It was unbelievable. Um, and then the other thing is supporting the vets and first responders and all these different things really made it uh, kind of swayed me to Monster Bass. Um they have good people and the community is great. They actually have a, a monster bass nation Facebook page, um, which you can go on and ask questions. And there's a lot of knowledgeable people from around the country on that, uh, monster bass nation Facebook page that will help you out. No one's, no one's keeping secrets there. It's, it's really good. Just like you, we are broadcasting about local stuff here. We don't like to keep secrets. Um, it, it's really cool. Oh, sorry. Another gadget. Have you seen this one? Ooh, are those the uh, the new Rapala pliers? Yes. For using the uh, those O-rings with the... Uh, I wish I, I don't have any sitting here. I got them all in my tackle bag. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a way to put a ring on a uh, soft plastic stick bait, wacky worm type thing. Um, you put you put the uh, what do you call it? You put the ring here, and then you open it up, open the ring up. You slide the 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 worm in there, and then you close it and slide the ring off. And it <coughs> and it enables you to uh, one save your soft plastics, um, um, and two it allows you to rig it either uh, parallel or perpendicular to your bait, depending on how you're fishing. Because sometimes you fish an eco rig. Or like we old timers like to say, a weighted worm. Um, sometimes you want that uh, parallel with the bait, depending on how much weight you have in it and which way that bait is going to fall. Um, sometimes you want to have it uh, perpendicular to the bait. And I'm going to go over that in one of my YouTube videos. So uh, Ripping Lips with Marty Lawson, I'll go over that stuff and teach you how to use this and, and the effects. Uh, the effects that it will have positively on your wallet, especially if you like to use Gary Yamamoto soft plastics. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Yeah. So let's yeah, get, and as okay. we segue here, we got JR's fishing channel. I see my next purchase. Uh, I, I actually do a crazy Alberta knot for braids of fluoro, but I need to try that. My eyes are not what they used to be. <laughs> yeah. It's a really cool tool. Uh, let's see, Greg, uh, we got another one here. We got Greg Plank. 
get that there. Greg Plank, what's up, boys? Good to see you. Hey. Uh, guys, and then if there's any issues on the Facebook side of things, Facebook is being very wonky right now as a platform. If if things aren't coming through well, just head on over to the YouTube channel. YouTube seems not to have as many problems, just saying. So, uh, and then Greg Plank again, uh, Bento, Bento Box. Um, uh, Bento Box. Where's yeah. That? Huh? You're Greg. You're gonna have to give me more information about that, please. Yeah. I don't know what one that is. I mean, I got Benito Bates, and oh no, I got Bento Bates, Lunker Hunt, Lunker Hunt, Bento Bates. Is that what you what he's talking about? Maybe. I that might be what he's talking about. But now, now, yeah. so what's funny is when we first met, it really was how you rep so many local bait manufacturers and things like that. And oh, there it is, right there. I'm gonna go full screen, Lunker Hunt. That's so cool. Those are yeah. really good. Yeah, they make some really good products. They make some outrageous products too. But you know, you were looking for that cicada. Remember, you were looking last yep. year for that cicada. Go to Lunker Hunt. I think they got that that cicada bait. Oh, that's that's so cool. Yeah. So now yeah, local bait companies. Um, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that I've done is is going to the local fishing shows. We had the Fredericksburg one at the Eagles Club here. Um, we had the one up uh, 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 Hillendale, which you were at. Mm -hmm. uh, there was another one in Fishersville. And then there's, you know, there's a couple more out uh, actually west of you going over into into uh, West Virginia and things like that. You know, you go to those things and there's a lot of local guys in there that make stuff that are very proud of their craft. Um, a lot of folks like to uh, to do their own painting, uh, so it's hand painted, you know, hand painted baits, um, which is which is really good. Um, and that's uh, one of the guys that I like to work with is Daniel Charles from Bent Rod Fishing USA. Uh, he actually has a shop. Uh, I think it's yeah, he has it oh, both. Right. Uh, yeah, not not a sh physical shop where you can walk into, but a uh, online store uh, for Ben Rod Fishing now. <clears throat> if you like those big glide baits and stuff, there, Thomas, you need to go check out Daniel Charles at Ben Rod Fishing. Um, and and uh, you know Shane Flint from Shane Flint Outdoors, the largest uh, free online uh, bass fishing tournament in the country right now. I think he's like the only one too. I mean, yeah, uh, like he's, he's freaking killing it. Yeah, monopoly on that. Went outdoors. Let me see. Hold on. There we go. I need to get him back on the show too. I know he's super busy now. Outdoors. Right there. Go to this man's YouTube channel. He does free bass fishing tournaments. He's getting ready to do the uh, the five bass tournament coming up. Uh, he's got a real neat format for doing that. He's got a sponsor, Omni Fishing. Uh, he gives that, you know, the winner gets a, I don't know, I think it's a free $200 gift card to Omni Fishing and you can go buy whatever you want. I mean, it's freaking awesome. It, and, it, and it's so crazy because MLF really broke it open with this catchway release and using yeah. technology to score track things and then kayaking got onto it. And then you have yeah. kayaking and now Shane has taken it to the next level with, you don't even need a boat to right. do it. Right. And it just shows you where we're heading with this. And I know on here, we do have issues with people saying like, well, people can cheat and all this other stuff. And like, I want to have my five fish catch, bring them in. And I think that's all well and good, but you got to look at the writing on the wall where technology is going. Where's it going to be in five to 10 years? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's really something that CPR, you know, mm -hmm. catch photo release stuff is, uh, I, I think is really sweeping the country for the local tournaments because, you know, every time, you know, as a matter of fact, I, I, I'm just going to say this. And, and, you know, if I hurt people's feelings, oh, well, there was a tournament at Lake Mooney, which you fished with me. Um, and Lake Mooney is just an amazing body of water. Mm -hmm. And there was a tournament there. And after the tournament was over, there were, you know, six pound bass floating dead after the tournament. And we don't need to do that anymore. We really don't need to do that anymore. The fact that, you know, you could have a tournament 
And at check-in, you get a three-digit code Mm -hmm. at check-in. So there's no cheating because you don't know what your code is. And and you go out and, and, you know, if you have to go by weight, then, you know, you, you... you got to take a picture where nothing else is in the background. You hold the fish up and you, and you can take a picture of the weight, but most of it is just by measurement. I mean, the, the fact that we're losing good fish during even a small tournament, a 10, 12, 15 boat tournament. And after release there's there's big bass, you know, floating. That's not good. I mean, you did the story about those, you know, those, commercial nets i mean you know and then then there's the those people can turn around and say well look how many how many bass are floating after a tournament which is very true it it, it is true and then guys just just because i want to kind of get everyone's feel here on this if you think catchway release will be more prevalent in the future i want you to put a y in the chat if you think it's not and it's just a fad put an f in the chat just to kind of get a vibe for what people are thinking right now so again you know put a y in the chat if you think catchway release is going to become more prevalent in the future and put put an f in the chat if you think it's not it's just a fad and it's going to go away in, in my opinion you know i think catchway release because of regulations, because of how much more fishing pressure, I think it's the wave of the future as technology progresses. Because if you think about it, when MLF started this five, six, seven years ago, no, six, uh, six years ago, that long, has it? whenever, um, I mean, I, I can go in my notes, I can check. It hasn't been long, but when they started that, that's like literally the cusp of this technology and it's constantly getting better. And so I can see in 10 years where it'll be so good that you will be able to weigh a fish, take a picture of it somehow that that'll all be seamlessly on some app. Someone's going to create that because there's money to be made. And Shane really like he, he saw this coming honestly before any, when you, when you look, so a kayak tournament, is a perfect example. They don't have a live well on their freaking kayak that can hold five fish. Mm-hmm. So the only way for and even a, an electric only tournament, it's really hard for people to have, you know, a smaller boat and have a, an operating live well on there um, for electric only tournaments. So that catch photo release, I think, especially for the kayakers, is outstanding. Mm-hmm. And it's, I mean, there's national tournaments for that, too. You just go on and look at kayak tournaments. You're not going to find a kayak tournament yet where it's a a, a catch way release. It is all catch photo release, you know, and it's you got to have the proper bump board. You lay your fish down. You have your three digit code. You take a picture of it and you upload it. I mean, that's simple. You know, the only the only downside of that is you know sometimes you might have a a 20 inch five pound fish and the other guy has a 24 inch three pound fish um but it's it's you know shane does it by length and and you know catch photo release uh i like it i think it's a great thing i think what mlf is doing there that they have the recorder right there on board it gets done right there. I mean, it takes extra people. You got to have an extra person in your boat, but that person's just sitting there waiting to to weigh and record your fish and nothing else. I don't I I haven't seen any interference uh watching the shows and things like that and reading the articles. So, I think what MLF is doing I, I is smart. I really do. Um that's my and- opinion. And with that segue, uh, when you talked yeah. about Lake Moody, uh, I actually was blessed that over Memorial Day weekend, we did a whirlwind trip and drove down there for one day to Frederick, because uh, I've never been to downtown Fredericksburg. And to drive through there and to see more intently just cruising with my wife, checking out the scenery and stuff, how many lakes you have, then look, Fredericksburg is right there on the Rappahannock River. And there's there's places that you can walk downtown Frederick that are literally right within casting distance of smallmouth water. Um, this place, it, it, it's super special and kind of like it, it's not in the limelight at all when it comes to uh, like, I think anglers in this area in Virginia. And so I'm going to. Well, I will tell you this. Um, so they just did a 
a, a tournament out there at Lake Mooney. And Lake Mooney actually has its own Facebook page. So it's a Lake Mooney Facebook page you can go to. Um, and it's gotten a lot of attention. But, you know, Thomas, you and I have talked about this in the past. That sometime, sometimes attention and what is going on is a good thing for a lake. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> uh, just re just uh, a couple of weeks ago, I will tell you that uh, the, what do we call it? The D DWR. Department right. of Wildlife Resources, Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources. They just put um, 31,000 walleye in the Lake Mooney. Wow. Um, and then they put in 200 more grass carp, which I'm not too thrilled about. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of grass carp in there already. And they're they're eating my, my favorite fishing spots with uh, the amount of uh, hydrilla and stuff that they're eating. But, um, you know, two years ago, um who Tom, runs like i think it's actually odenkirk you know what let me make a note of that because i'm going to have him on the show in july and i'm going to ask him about that about the grass go on yeah there's another gentleman his name is travis um give me one second and and i can definitely get you his information he keeps his name is travis tate he's actually on the lake mooney fishing it's called lake mooney fishing uh, in parentheses, Rocky Pen Reservoir Facebook page. Um, he is, he is, uh, he keeps us all updated. He's the one that told us, he'll tell us when they're going out and doing the electronic survey. He'll tell us when they're stocking stuff. Um, he just gives out a lot of good information about Lake Mooney. And, um, you know, if you look at that page, there's been some really nice bass being caught out of Lake Mooney. And, you know, you have some people screaming, oh, you're ruining the lake. Everyone's going to go there now. <clears throat> um, I, I don't think that's the case. One, it's a little bit out of the way for a lot of people, unless you're right in the local area. Um, but it's it's public. I mean, it's public. It's not mm -hmm. some private lake. <clears throat> you know, um, I was out there. Actually, I went out Friday afternoon and. I was one of like, well, I think I was the only electric boat out there. Everyone else was in kayaks. But the whole time I was out there, I saw maybe six people. Um, and then I went Sunday um, and I got there super early Sunday morning. And I'd say by 10 o'clock, there was probably 30 boats out there fishing between kayaks and, and electric boats. So it does get crowded on the weekends, but during the week, it's not crowded. I mean, it's, it's not like it's, I don't think it's going to get overfished um, <clears throat> because a lot of people like me, I just catch and release. I don't care how big they are, um, but they, they, the Lake Mooney actually wants you to keep some bass in that, you know, that 12 to 14 inch range and take them home and eat them uh, to keep the, the population good. But I mean, the bait well, that is in that lake and everything else is just phenomenal. I, so. I, people will always complain about boating pressure, but this is my hypothesis is if you take a 10,000 acre lake and you take that same surface area and you break it amongst multiple lakes, you will actually decrease the pressure because a family or whatever, you have to pick where you go. Um, if you had just that one lake, everyone's going to flock to it. You can travel around the whole thing. And there's an inconvenience of if you go to Lake Mooney, and it's packed, how many people are literally going to spend the time to put the boat on the trailer and go somewhere else? You're not. Yeah, and, no. And one, one is you can't fish all the way around that lake because it's private property up to the lake. Okay. So there's, there's homes around the lake mm -hmm. and you can't just walk around the shoreline and fish wherever you want. Oh, well, let's talk about that one first then. Let's, mm -hmm. We're going to zoom in here on the map then. So guys, this place is also called, you know, if you are on Google Maps, I think this is important. Um, it's called Rocky Pen Run Reservoir on Google Maps. Uh, it's code name, I guess, if you'll say, if you go to the DWR website or the Facebook page is Mooney, because I, I believe historically that was the old pond name, correct? No, no. So <clears throat> originally it was Rocky Pen Reservoir. And I believe Mooney was a fallen state trooper from the Stafford area. Um, there you go. It was killed in the line of duty. So they named, they renamed it after him. So yeah, down at the bottom is where you launch at. 
That is the only public launch there. That is the only place you can put in a boat and trailer. Now, kayakers, if they know the area, they can do some all other cul-de-sacs that you can actually launch at. But, um, you know, I see a lot of recreational kayakers out there. So there might be 20 boats and a third of them are just recreation. Paddle boarders, just families out kayaking on a beautiful day. So it's not everyone fishing. The other thing is the, the condition of that ramp um, they added a section last year, um, but the hydrilla grows so thick in that bay that you could not get anything. I mean, uh, what Shane's boat is, what, 16 feet? Uh, Shane couldn't get his boat in the water. Yeah, and uh, so. And boats and stuff, you can't get in there come July, end of July, beginning of August because of all the growth and the water level drops. So kayakers and, and little boats like mine can still get in there. Yeah. Um, and, and I think the sad part is that's because they shouldn't have put the boat ramp there. And, well, and because, because of that, yeah. let's just say hypothetically, they put the boat ramp on a deeper part of the lake where the hydrilla wouldn't be a problem. Hypothetically. I don't think they put grass carp in Mooney. Right. And, I don't think so either. And that's a shame because, you know, I've, I've had, I've had multiple people on the show and, and you have this where you're like, well, I'm inconvenienced because of the grass and government always overreacts. And so it's like, fine, then let's just napalm the whole damn lake. And then it's going to be like Frederick because Frederick went through Lake Frederick up where we're at, went through this, uh, 10 years ago where they put grass carp in, they put too many grass carp in, they killed everything. They ate everything to the bone. And then there was not even a lot of shore vegetation and the lake sucked for a long time and grass is now just starting to get back. Yeah. And I, and that's sad because what lakes makes these lakes really good. These lakes in particular that don't have a lot of wood and timber is the vegetation. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, fishing the weed lines and, and going into these bays, like, I mean, this, if that boat ramp wasn't there, and like you said, put in a deeper part of the lake, that bay right there would be absolutely amazing oh, yeah. in early spring for spawning bass. And then in the summer, when that hydrilla comes up to just go in there and drop, you know, flip, do flip a rig into uh, some of these little holes and stuff through that hydrilla, it would have been amazing. But it is what it is. Um, we deal with it there at Lake Mooney, but there is still a lot of standing timber in places. So you still have that. Can you launch a glass boat at Mooney? JR's fishing channel. Can you launch a glass boat at Lake Mooney? I yeah, mean, so you can. yeah, uh, motor has to be up uh, and trolling only trolling motor only. So it is an electric only. It is a, uh, it's one of the freshwater reservoirs for the county of Stafford. So there is a water treatment plant there um, and everything else. So, yes, you can launch a shiny boat on Mooney. Um, now you can. Once a, once the water level starts going down, you're going to have a hard time. Um, but, yes, you can. And it, it's a great place to fish. Uh, please feel free. Come down and try it. I mean, I know some people local that will never fish Mooney again because they just say, oh, I had a horrible day. And I will tell you what, uh, and, and I told <laughs> I told Thomas this about three weeks ago, I went in the evening and I caught 40, over 40 bass. Wow. And six, of, six of them were over five pounds. The biggest one was five, seven, three. I, I am shocked by like the, how a lake is laid out is impressive because when we went out on Lake Mooney, I'm surprised at how many boats it can absorb because of the way it's built. There's so many fingers and coves and pockets. Whereas if you had like a bowl, like an Okeechobee or something like that, you know, you, you can't really have the volume of anglers on there. And it's a deep lake too. Like you said, it can host walleye and stuff, but how is it fishing? I guess like right now, if you could say, it's still producing good numbers. It's still producing, you know, big size, but it's a little bit harder unless you know how to fish grass and you have live scope. Is that a quick well, little synopsis? I'll get, drop the live scope thing. I don't have live scope and I fish. <laughs> well, Shane does. I think, oh, yeah. and Shane, by the yeah, way, is in the chat. Uh, just seeing yeah, Marty yeah, telling fishing is. stories. <laughs> yeah. Shane, Shane and Thomas, the bass snipers. 
but uh, so uh, yeah, I, I look at uh, right now. Mooney is tough. We're in that transition stage, which is after the post spawn. Uh, I did notice Sunday that the bluegill are on their beds right now, and um, there are some crashing bass. But the temperature was 78, almost 79 degrees uh, water temp. Um, and I think the bass are moving deep or holding deep. Um, I don't think we're in that full summer pattern yet where you have good numbers deep and shallow. I don't think that's the case right now. Uh, Friday evening and Sunday morning were tough, uh, real tough days. Uh, didn't catch, I mean, Caught a fair amount. Uh, I think uh, me and my buddy put like maybe 15 bass in the boat uh, Friday afternoon and probably 12 on Sunday uh, fishing for about four and a half hours. Um, you know, the biggest one, uh, I'll just say I lost one that was about four pounds, snapped me off in the twigs, but uh, the biggest one was a three pounder. I mean, if you just enjoy going out and catching fish, go to Mooney, catch fish. Um, we got another one for JR's Fishing Channel. Looking for a place to go Saturday because there are three tournaments going out on Anna, and I don't want to fight the traffic. And we're going to get, and JR, uh, hopefully by the end of this broadcast, depending on where you're located, you know, let, let me know in the comment section where your home is, generically speaking, so we can kind of give you some places to go around uh, where you live. Because uh, yeah, Mooney so is just one of many. Yeah, if you're willing to go to Mooney, there's also Hunting Run. Yep, uh, I get that one too. Hunting Run has a great ramp, uh, plenty of room, plenty of places to fish. Well, let's just get into that one now. So okay. the next lake on the docket, honestly, which is funny, is we're just going from north all the way to south, is Hunting Run. Um, yeah. I got, I had the pleasure of going out with Shane last year on that. Got to see you out there too. Uh, it's a, it's also a neat little lake. Um, so the boat ramp is down there by that green dot. There you go. There's the boat ramp. Now, the thing is, is to fish uh, Hunting Run and Nye Reservoir, you need to get a permit. Um, it's like $25 a year, uh, unlimited at both places. I think that's what the cost is. I'm, I'm not exactly sure because I got the county residents and I got the veteran discount and I got a a handicap discount and for a year to fish both places it cost me 10 bucks uh and that covers your launch your launch fee and everything so um i think the standard price is maybe 25 bucks for the year but, what if you just um, want to go one time are you allowed to just go just one time yeah but you're still going to have to pay a, a fee to enter okay um, yeah i used to know if they would allow a, a one-time fee or if it had to be a year pass right Yes, they'll do a one day fee. Okay. Um, cool. But yeah, uh, so the person had asked if you can put in a shiny boat here, a glass boat, you can definitely put a glass boat in it at Hunting Run. I would actually recommend uh, Hunting Run um, out of all of them for a glass boat. Um, it's a, it's, it's a little easier. There you go. Nine hour of the internet guys. So for all the yeah. podcast listeners that are listening to re, re upload this, this is straight from the department of wildlife resources for Virginia season access to both Nye and hunting run costs $15 for Spotsylvania, $18 for Frederick and Stafford and 25 for all others. Senior citizens over the age of 62 have free access and children under 16 are free. Of course, boat rentals are like $6 an hour, but dude, you're not asking about that again. You can go and I'll actually put this right the link in the episode I think, description. I think veterans are veterans are actually free also or i'm sorry not veterans but uh active duty active duty military i believe are free um but yeah there's more information on the uh on the dwr side about it um but yeah good place to go uh plenty of places to fish there it's not as deep as uh as mooney um a lot of standing timber i will say well before the grass carp were in Mooney, um, Hunting Run doesn't have nearly as much of the the really thick grass lines, but um, there is there is uh, a lot of good coves where you can fish where there's grass and things like that. But it's 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 a different type of fishing, honestly. Um, Lake Mooney was was really known for the deep water drop offs, the really deep 
uh, points, main lake points, and the grass, uh, the hydrilla that would grow up. Um, hunting run is all about some of these deep, deep pockets and standing timber. There's a lot of timber in, in, in this one and, and Mooney, but I think, I think uh, fishing timber is, is more conducive to hunting run and fishing weeds is, is better at uh, Mooney. Now there's also, uh, if you want to go to the next one, which is Nye Reservoir. Um, yeah, and then uh, I guess, uh, does anyone else in the comment section have a question for Hunting Run? Hunting Run, and then so right now you're saying, if you're more of a grass guy, go to Mooney right now. If you're more of Standing Timber, go to Hunting Run. Uh, but both are on fire right now. Uh, both are in transition right now. I'd Into the summer another, pattern. I'd give, it, I'd give it another couple of weeks. Um, <clears throat> Till the bass kind of get into their summer patterns and then it's it's like any place else thomas with with summer patterns there's going to be bass that are deep and there's going to be bass that are going to cruise the shallows looking for food so um if you can find those points you can have a uh, have a great time and obviously you can see just looking at uh at hunting run there are a lot of points and a lot of coves so yeah and, and just to kind of cut off the comments section, because I know that they'll be typing. This is why you have got, we all have to come together as anglers and talk and call our Department of Wildlife Resources, the people that are representatives in the government, and talk to them about how they handle these fisheries. Especially when you think of a Mooney and a hunting run, where there is no jet skis, there is no wake boats. It is literally built for fishing. I want them to explain to us why they're putting in so many grass carp. There are ways where you can throw pellets, uh, pellets. So you specifically target an area and that's it. A pellet doesn't swim away and keep eating. And there are so many times where there have been issues with grass carp where they do put in too many by mistake or whatever. And then you have consequences that are generational issues. So I would really like it if with this show particularly it helps people have the courage to reach out and ask these questions because one person alone can't make a difference but if we all come together we can try to make some changes here but it, it's so important because grass adds it grass when you add grass to a lake and we talked about that pocket in mooney if you get rid of all the grass in that pocket in mooney all of a sudden you have less surface area for fish to have to have habitat it decreases the amount of cover. It decreases the amount of life you can have per acreage. This is just absolute facts. And so when you kill these fisheries, it, you're going to catch more fish for, for about a year or two because you just burnt all the trees down. But then all of a sudden that place is going to take a nosedive. This happens on the tidal Potomac all the freaking time. Hey, hey Thomas, I, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I believe, I believe the grass carp that they put into Mooney are hybrid which means they cannot breed. So but, I think, I think they put them in there to control the weeds for now, but not to the point where they're gonna eventually die off because they can't spawn. So then your grass is gonna come back. Um, that's what they said about Frederick though. <laughs> I think that's the way they're managing it, uh, hopefully. Hopefully that will be what happens and the eagles and ospreys will get their bellies full of big dead grass carp. But, but uh, the problem with that is I, I get there. I get there. The thought process there is it doesn't breed. There's no problem, but you're still dealing with a creature. You, you cannot, you cannot calculate how much that thing is going to eat in an area. Right. So if you release 10,000 grass carp, whatever your calculations are cool they're not just going to stop in the area you put it you cannot be no, very organized and, no you you can't and yeah. so an example is I, let's go back to lake mooney's classic example there's that one cove hypothetically because of the way mooney and hunting runner structured the only complaints would come from that boat ramp okay we need to get rid of the, the grass here if i put in hybridized grass carp they will eat all the grass in the problem area and then continue to eat for the next five years or however long its lifespan is, and it'll keep going indiscriminately. If you do pellets or maybe a mower or things like that, you can target the key areas that are an issue and then that's it. And that's where I think there's a disconnect when they say like, but listen, they won't spawn. 
that's okay. I get what you're saying. Eventually they'll die off, but in that lifetime, they're just going to keep going to town yeah. and it destroys. Well, they're, 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 areas. Huge. they're huge in Mooney right now. And you know, like you said, so that Bay, if you go back to that Lake Mooney map, I, I will tell you that that bay where the where the ramp is really became a trouble area for a couple of reasons last year. Um, one is because the water level dropped so much that you really had a hard time getting in there. Um, <clears throat> there was actually actually someone someone launched and their truck was in the middle of that bay. And, and that's how far out they had to go to launch your boat off mm -hmm. their trailer. There's actually a picture of it on that Lake Mooney Facebook page. But um, that area is was really, that's like you said, that's the problem area. Now, zoom out, zoom out again. And I will tell you, like you just said, keep going. All right, uh, go up that center arm, the middle arm. Keep going. See those two islands back there? Yeah. All right. There's grass carp all the way out there. I mean, and that's that's about as far away from the ramp as you can get. So like you said, it's not like you can corral them and keep them in one area. I'm not sure where they got put in. There's other people that do know exactly where they were stocked from. Um, but like you said, that ramp area was the problem area. People couldn't launch boats to go fishing and things like that. Well, one, there's no, you don't have to buy a permit or anything to go fishing in Lake Mooney. Okay. There's no ramp fee at Lake Mooney. So, so what if, if, you know, bigger boats can't put in a Lake Mooney for a portion of the fishing season because the water level's down and it's choked with hydrilla? Big deal. Um, now the water levels up, everyone can launch. There's no hydrilla in that area. Uh, ah, there you go. That's Shane. Well, which lake are we talking about? Lake Mooney. All of our, all of our reservoirs down here are drinking reservoirs. So, um, yeah, so there Shane piped in and said, you can't use pellets in a drinking water lake. Yeah, I would like to find more information about that because I know they use pellets on in Lake Anna now because they had an issue. Lake Anna specifically was another place that had a debacle where they thought they put in hybridized and a few of them weren't. Um, and so they started to use pellets. And so I'd be interested to know more of that information. So that's another podcast episode. I'll get a scientist on to talk about hybridized versus pellets versus mechanical. Um, because, yeah, I, I know grass carp are the cheapest option, generally yeah. speaking which is probably why they go with that. But there's also a big issue on uh, Chickamauga right now where they sprayed too much. And now they're starting to have fish kills and stuff because of bacteria infections, which is what happened to like Anna where they killed so much grass. You started to have like a red tide or something like that, like five or six years ago on Lake Anna. Um, and there are people in the chat that could probably, you know, or that live there can give you more information about that. But people don't really understand that aquatic, it, aquatic vegetation is not a weed or a pest. It's actually needed for the ecosystem. And I think, a lot of the issues is not is not the biologist. It's the constituents is what we are and we're ignorant and we don't understand that. And we complain about the grass without understanding how important it is. It's the same thing like, you know, deer need corn, deer need uh, like oats if you want to grow big bucks. And if you burn down their forest, you know, you're going to have an issue over time. And again, I don't want this to be a this episode to be a full, you know, rant on this stuff because I will have yeah. guests on to specifically that can really go in depth into this, but that's where you got the moon and you got the hunting run. And then if we go down here, here's the one that everyone doesn't like to fish apparently. Um, and this is nigh. So, okay. So a lot of people call this no fish nigh. I. Um, I went out with my son last weekend and we had a blast. I mean, lots of two and three pounders, uh, one that was four and a half pounds. And talking to the to the older gentleman that runs the booth there, because um, this is the other one that teams up with uh, Hunting Run for the permit. Um, he said the the catches have been were really good last year. He said higher than he'd ever, better than he'd ever seen. And he's been there, I think, since the place opened. But wow, uh, he said that uh, the fishing's gotten a lot better there over the last couple of years. It's not it's not a highly pressured body of water at all. Um, 
And we had a great time out there. I mean, there are some big pickerel in there. I'll tell you that too. But um, yeah, fish and I, it's, it's, it's fun to fish. There's plenty of room. Um, as you can see, it's long. Uh, it looks like a river, like very rivery, almost like a oh, yeah. reservoir. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good fishing there too. I had a blast with my son out there fishing. So that was really good. Um, and then the last one is Abel. Go ahead. Go ahead, Thomas. Yeah, and, and yeah, there's something there that you mentioned. I think it's interesting where you said like, there's, it doesn't get the fishing pressure. And then guys, for the individuals that just tuned in, I have this hypothesis that if, if you had the ability to make a bunch of little lakes, you know, hunting run Mooney size, nigh size, and you put them in an area, it would do a better job of distributing the fishing pressure than if you just had one big lake because it takes so much more work to go from, uh, you know what, Mooney's packed. I'm going to leave, go to hunting run. Most people, they drag their family, their dog, their wife. They're like, screw it. We're going to stay here. And so I think that does help distribute the pressure more. And it sounds like anecdotally, that's correct, where people are like, oh, nice things. We're not going to go there. All of a sudden, that lake over so one or two years, it comes back. Yeah. You know, and, and here's, the, here's my other, the other thing that I think is going on. So when COVID hit, something that everyone could do and not be around anyone else was go fishing. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows that over the past, well, especially not so much now, but when COVID was full bore and all we could do is really go outside and go hiking and be alone and go fishing. And, you know, if you could get in a kayak or a small boat, you were by yourself and you could go out fishing. A lot of people took up the sport of bass fishing mm -hmm. during COVID. You couldn't find a kayak or a boat like mine, a bass raider or, or small John boats for sale anywhere. They were all sold out. They couldn't get them on, in stock. Mm -hmm. Everyone bought them up because it was, a way, it was a way to have recreation without being around people due to COVID. Okay. So now if you go on the websites, you're seeing tons of kayaks and you're seeing small boats and you're seeing John boats for sale now that you couldn't get a year and a half, two years ago. So all those people that went and bought the recreational kayaks and fishing kayaks and small fishing boats because they wanted something to do during COVID are now not doing it. So all those things are coming up for sale. If you go on like Facebook Marketplace, you see tons of kayaks and John boats and all this stuff for sale now because people aren't using them because now things have gone back to normal. They don't have to worry about staying away from people. So they'd rather go walk in downtown Fredericksburg and go look at all the pretty shops than put a boat in at Lake Moon. I will say... I agree that it's gone down, but I still think it's it's still higher than what it was. But I, I see, I see, um, which is a good thing for the market. I see a lot of recreational kayakers, mm -hmm. a ton of just recreational oh, yeah. kayakers, because you can take a family out. It's you know, kayaks aren't real expensive. You can get the ones at Walmart or or you know wherever, the cheaper ones, just the regular paddle not made for fishing. Um, they can pick them up still pretty cheap. The little Pelican sun dolphin type, you know, kayaks and the families can go out and have a good time paddling around. So that I still see a lot of or paddle boarders. They're hey, not fishing. No, they're not. I mean, you really get a good taste for it when you get out on the water at six 30 in the morning and you see how many, people are out there fishing in kayaks and small boats and and sure by 10 o'clock you're seeing three times as many boats but still well over half of them are recreational so what is a real total number of boats that you're seeing out there fishing you know mm -hmm. um well i don't, and, I don't see and then it. it's your level of skill too right. and then that's the next divider but then like also the kayak boom when it comes to tournament fishing for kayaks that that took it to the next level as well. well i have seen an increase in tournaments at mooney and at hunting run this year a lot more tournaments going on which means you're going to have a lot more people going in and pre-fishing if they can and stuff like that but you know i i don't care if and and it's 
I have yet to see tournaments on all my bodies of water that I like to fish mm -hmm. at the same time. If they're holding a tournament at Hunting Run, I go to Lake Mooney. If they're holding one on Lake Mooney, I'll go to Nye. If they're holding one at Nye, then I'll go to Hunting Run. Hey, you have the options. So it's not like, I don't care. So they hold a tournament. Big deal. It's a public body of water. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think uh, fishing pressure wise, I really don't think it's affecting us much. Um, I was a little concerned. Lake Mooney, um, <clears throat> we were really pushing to have a slot limit. Um, and that didn't happen. So there is no, there is no uh, slot limit at Mooney. I really wish it was. I wish uh, they'd say you can keep bass under X number of inches, not over, uh, to get people to take the smaller bass out. Um, but that didn't happen. We, we didn't get that through to, to the right people. Um, I really think uh, we need to try and push that again from the user community of Lake Mooney to go back to the uh, DWR and Stafford County and say, hey, look, you know, we're avid fishermen. We love this place. It's fantastic. Please put the slot limit on, you know, uh, you can keep five fish, 14 and under. Um, I, I think that's that would be better than just having it wide open right now. Uh, I mean, I I have yet to see anyone walk out of there carrying bass in a cooler. Yeah, and especially so. with the smaller lakes. But then that gets in this next question, which is speaking of small lakes, JR's Fishing Channel, have either one of you fished in Briary Creek Lake? And what are your thoughts? Um, Briary, the legend of Briary Creek. Cool. So I actually... How far is that for me? It's uh, it's closer than it is for me to, for me to there. Uh, Briary is a legendary place, and I actually think it's going to be coming back. Um, Briary Creek back in the day, if you guys don't know, was a massive fish factory. It had a lot of regulations, limit sizes, a call what was it a slot limit? I think it's correct. Yeah, um, I think it's actually going to come back. You know. JR, I just know the rumors of you. I've not fished it before, but again, that place just got the snot pattern net out of it for so long. And then I think what happens with all these fisheries, it gets pounded. Then people say it sucks. The rumor catches on that it sucks. No one goes there and then it heals up and then it'll come back. Um, so that's kind of what I know about that place. A lot of standing timber, uh, a little bit of vegetation, a little bit of shore vegetation, standing vegetation, things like that. But it's a really cool place. Um, and then that kind of gets us into our, our last lake of, of the evening, which is Abel Lake. And so let me get back, crawl right back up this map and get right back up there. Do, 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 do. And, and we'll get to Abel, um, which is the one. Right, there we go. Terrain. There we go. Uh, I believe uh, that's, that's not Abel. Abel's up here, right? Yeah. Is, is yeah, north? That's Abel. Yeah. Now, Abel is the one that's on the Marine base, correct? No. No, that's Stafford County. The Marine base is further north and actually northeast. Uh, Abel Lake is very, very long. Um, Does it have a lot of current? Uh, no, not really. Hmm. Not much current. Uh, the launch is south of you. The launch is down in there. Somewhere. Yeah. That, well, hold on. Back up just a little bit. Well, that's as south as we can go. Uh, Shane would probably be able to point right to it because he goes there a lot. Other, other way. So the other south is what he's saying. Oh, yep. Okay. Right up there. Uh, yep. You mean where, where it says boat ramp? Yep. There it is. Thank you, Shane. The other way, north. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a dirt ramp. I don't think there's any concrete there. Shane might correct me. I don't think there's concrete there. Yeah, this place looks like it would get a lot of wind current, too. If you get a north-south wind, I mean, this place looks like it would just blow and you get a lot of wind-generated current. Well, we get how it's yeah, but see stuff. that? That whole big S-turn there cuts back yeah. on all of that. I, I will tell you, it's a very steep-sided lake. Uh, all up through that area, it's it's almost like a cliff. 
Hmm. As a matter of fact, there's a section of rock uh, in that one area that it's it's just sheer right into the water, and it's it's pretty deep right there. Um, but yeah, it's it's a good fishery. Shane says south wind is when I kill it out there. Well, Shane will also tell you his moon phase, um, uh, the amount of uh, uh, growth on his face, uh, the uh, type of coffee that he drinks in the morning are all determining factors on when he's going to fish Abel. <laughs> so now I'm getting to pick on Shane. Uh, yeah, Does he have small mouth in it? Uh, I don't think so. Hmm. I haven't heard. Now, now Shane fishes able a lot more than I do. Um, I go out there once in a while, but if you look, uh, going from the boat ramp and like going through those S turns and everything, that's it's a long way. Uh, for a small boat like me, for me to fish that entire day, I want to have like two and a half batteries on board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it is very long, it's very narrow. Um, there's little pockets all throughout going going down there, but um, you know, yeah, that's that's a long one. So uh, good fishing in there at times. You got to hit it right. I mean, Shane will tell you there there's there's times that I think even if if Lake Mooney and 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 Hunting Run were packed with four tournaments and everything else, unless the conditions are right, he's not even going to go to Abel. It just has to be right. Um, so that's that's. I, I will tell you, Abel Lake is a lake where I will listen to my buddy Shane and Brian, and they will tell me when to go there. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and definitely we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have Shane back on the show here. Uh, I know he's a busy man with his Mongol Empire, but uh, we'll get him back on the show to talk about all these fisheries too. It, it's I, I, I think uh, you know. There's another one, uh, Lake Orange. Lake uh, Orange. Yep, that's a small one. Good lord! Is, but man, there's some nice fish in there. I've gone in there a few times. That's Curtis. That's Curtis, Curtis Lake. Yeah, uh, uh, you got Orange go to County, Orange, Virginia. Orange. It's closer to the Lake of the Woods. Uh, Come on, map. You are being so laggy right now. There we go. That's Lake of the Woods. Uh, where is Orange? And there's Culpepper. This one I really like because I'm looking for a house around here, actually. <laughs> I think no, is it Lake Orange is closer to Fredericksburg. It's real small. <clears throat> uh, let me see. Where's uh you know what? This is stupid. Let me just do I literally have the most powerful search engine right here. Lake Orange. Or, oh, Virginia. Isn't that hard, Tom? Let me just type the damn thing in. Oh man, it is tiny. God, I remember fishing a tournament here back in the day, a long time ago. Like Marsh, it was with the Marshall Bassmasters back in high school. Huh. There's a ton of stumps in that thing, if I recall. Yeah. Oh, that is so close to Lake Anna. All right. Yeah, well. but it's it's good fishing. I mean, you know, again, it's an electric only. That's the thing. That's what I love. You know. Uh, all the big boats, they like going to Anna. Or they like running down to Rappahannock and things like that. For me, I go to the smaller lakes, electric only. And then if you want to. All right, let's not talk about Lake, Lake Orange. Let's talk about one more spot. All right. Ooh, okay. One more spot. Rappahannock above the city of Fredericksburg. So go to I-95 where it crosses over the Rapp. There you go. All right. So if you see that line that goes all along the river, that's actually a walking path that goes all the way from. Oh, wow. To Rappahannock. It goes all the way up to uh, like Mott's Reservoir. That's all the way up and around the corner again. You got to keep going for Mott. There's Mott's. Okay. So Mott's is uh, Fredericksburg. 
uh, city of Fredericksburg drinking water reservoir. Um, you can go there too, but that's that's another permit that you have to get. And that's just for moths. Yeah, that's just for moths. But uh, the Rappahannock, you know, like I said, that walking trail, you can walk up there quite a ways. If you're adventurous and you have good knees and you carry a walking stick, a fishing pole, and a backpack with water in your tackle, you can have a great time going up there and catching smallmouth. Uh, my buddy just went up there Saturday. And uh, yeah, you can't fish that. That's against the law. That's uh, <laughs> that, that spot right there, that quarry. So I didn't tell people to go fish this place, but it does look like there's a path that walks right past it. It is, but it's used for diver training for, uh, you know, like uh, submerged people, you know, drowning, drowned victims, things like that. The, the local area fire departments use that as a training facility. So it is against a lot of fish there. But above the city of Fredericksburg, you... you you can fish that whole area. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, my buddy was up there and he caught some 15, 16 inch smallmouth up there just uh, on Saturday, Saturday morning. Well, and even down below, like uh, when my wife and I were walking like downtown, especially like right here in, in this fall area, yeah. like you can park here and you got a great area where you get from the, the non title to title part of the wrap that you can fish. And it's just so funny. He's like, you could be living here and walk out your front door and literally just start fishing. It might not be the yeah. prime area, but you could still literally walk out your front door and you can start fishing. Now, if you follow that Rappahannock up, um, I will tell you that there are a lot of people that um, fish the Rapidan and the upper Rappahannock. And there's the, the they, call it, they call it the confluence. So yeah, follow that up. How far? Uh, wide awake, right? Uh, yeah, you got to keep going. So there's a right. Okay, right there. Now that's where the Rapidan and the Rappahannock come together. Mm. Um, that Duns Island. A lot of people camp there when they do float trips. Um, so a lot of people put in uh, on the Upper Rapidan or Upper Rappahannock, and they do float trips all the way down. Um, and there's several places to put out. There's uh, there's Mott's, Mott's Run. There's an area to put out there. A couple other places. But that area right there is some of the best smallmouth bass fishing in our local area. I mean, it's incredible. Um, Rapidan and Rappahannock. Rapidan is good for smallmouth. Rappahannock's good for smallmouth. Where they come together is really good. I, I mean... You know, Marty, th thank you so much for coming on the show tonight and just kind of like displaying the Frederick Fredericksburg area because it is so, you know, and we mentioned, I forgot even when I did the thumbnail tonight, I completely forgot about fishing, you know, Abel Lake. And we got, we got the Lee Wells winner of the NVKBA, uh, the bronze back challenge last year, uh, trip through confluence is good. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just, there's so much water around here in this area and it's so cool because everyone thinks if you're in the bass fishing industry, it has to be big reservoir, Smith mountain, Lake, Kerr, Gunnersville, you know, the big ones, but then you get into areas like this, just like in Georgia, where you have a thousand tiny little lakes and you could be here and you could put your boat on four or five unique fisheries within 20, 30 minutes, depending on where you live. And that's just so cool. Yeah, I got, I got, uh, I got four that in the early morning, I can be there in 20 minutes. I can reach all of them, which is great. So, you know, four options, four primary options to choose from all 20 minutes away from me. That does not include the Rappahannock. So Hicks Landing, on Rappahannock, I take Route 17 south of Fredericksburg. I go down to Hicks Landing. It costs seven bucks to put in right there. Um, catch plenty of bass and snakehead. So there you go. Uh, plenty of places to fish around here. Well, now I'd be remiss. If you had to pick one place on here to catch over, let's say, 18 pounds, one lake, what would it be? What's your hot take? Over an 18-pound bag? 18 pound bag. <clears throat> what place will get you in trouble with your friends the most? 
I will say that's a toss up. It's a toss up between my primary two. Mooney and Hunting Run. Which place then would be the where you go take a kid that you know he could catch something? Hunting Run. Hunting Run? Yep. yep. Definitely. Um, because Mooney is more strategic, I think. Um, Hunting Run is also, but I think there's more opportunity to just go and catch some fish. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, if you don't have a problem going in there, <laughs> like I used to, because, well, now I'm kind of hooked on the bigger ones, but, you know, a, a great day for me, I would have a great day if I went in there and caught, you know, 20, 30, you know, 12 to 16 inch bass in four hours. That's fun. If mm-hmm. you just want to go have fun, you can go to hunting run and just go have fun. If it's, you and a girlfriend or, you know, a girlfriend and a, a boyfriend, whatever. And you're just looking for a place to go fishing just to have some fun. Go to some of our lakes down here. I mean, Abel's tough, but Nye, Hunting Run, and Mooney, if you just want to go have fun and catch fish, go to them. It's, it's easy. It's inexpensive. You can spend a day. You know, all of those places have areas where you can stop and they have picnic tables or whatever. You can go have lunch. You can go, you know, uh, 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 Hunting Run and um, uh, Nye Reservoir and Lake Mooney all have uh, bathroom facilities. Able Lake does not. Mm. So, gentlemen, consider the people that you take with you fishing and bathroom facilities are, are a good thing to have. Um, so yeah, the three of them have, have bathroom facilities. <laughs> a huge shout out to, uh, I guess one of my super fans, Dave Williams. Thank you so much. I appreciate for everything you do. And let me know if you got your package in the mail. I don't know if the U S post office is working too well right now. Yeah. Um, no, it's not. I've been sending uh, stuff to people and they haven't been getting it. So please let me know if you haven't gotten your prize package. Um, you know, shipping, shipping everywhere is horrible. I mean, I, I, I talk to the monster bass guys all the time and, you know, they have new subscribers that, Hey, I was, I, you know, I got, I'm, I'm waiting on my first box to get here. And, you know, they're like, yeah, it's sitting in the queue waiting for it to be processed through the postal service or whatever. And then you have a post office like mine here in Fredericksburg where I've had something come in and sit there for four days and not move. You know, um, it is what it is. Shipping's horrible. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm not going to talk anymore about that. <laughs> <laughs> guys, again, thank you guys so much uh, for, for, you know, helping support the channel. I really appreciate it to everyone listening. Please like and subscribe. It really helps us out in the algorithm. Um, that's really how you can support the show as we keep growing here. Um, I'm putting out more content than I ever thought would be even possible. And I still have people that I'm trying to get scheduled uh, right now. This week, I have an interview every night except Friday night since my sister's getting married. And then next week, I got five episodes scheduled. And I have a big one. I have the head of the Potomac River Association. He's going to be coming on the show when I get him scheduled to talk about the new striped bass regulations. And then this is the this is the big one of the year for me. I'm getting the head of the Army Corps of Engineers on the show, two individuals to talk about the construction of Kerr and Lake Gaston, talking about everything about ha- what it actually took for them to put that lake in when they actually change the water levels up. I'm going to nerd out because I like the history and stuff. I'm actually getting them on to talk about that because I think lake building is fascinating because it's not just you dig a hole and you fill it with water. There's a shit ton of work that goes into this. <laughs> so that'll be fun, but that's going to be coming this summer. Marty, one more plug for Monster Bass and your channel, please. Yeah, Monster Bass Cares uh, is, is uh, you know, where you we have a Venmo code up and Thomas is going to put that up. Uh, please, if you, if you, if you, if you're willing, donate to monster bass cares and we support veteran organizations, first responder, uh, fishing tournaments where we send them stuff to give out as prizes or they can raffle it or whatever the case may be. Uh, it's a, it's a great thing to do. Uh, we have a lot of vets in this area that, that know what it's like. And, 
And if we can get someone out of the darkness and get them out there fishing, it's well worth it. Um, Thomas, I want to say thank you to you uh, for doing this. It's a great show. You keep it up. Get Shane on so that he can bash me a little bit and you guys can talk about sniping bass. Um, and, you know, I will I will say this. Uh, when I got you uh, the, the gig with Monster Bass, what, two weeks ago, uh, as soon as that broadcast was over, they came back to me and were just thanking me for getting you on that show because you're you're very very knowledgeable, you're good to talk to, and you did a great job on that. So, hey, if anyone wants to see the uh, our, our boy Thomas on Monster Bass, uh, go to the Monster Bass YouTube channel and under the live tab, you can go in and see the the interview that uh, Mr. Rick Patry did with our boy right here, Thomas Aarons, for fishing the DMV. It was great. Uh, he did a great job. He gave our area a lot of good props uh, and, and talking about what he does and what, what the interests are and what he's trying to get across to us local fishermen here. Well, I really appreciate what you do, buddy. I, re I really appreciate that you got me on that show. It was a lot of fun, and I actually enjoyed doing a call-in show. I think that's so cool, and it reminds me of my childhood, listening to people talking about the Redskins and all that. And it's like, that's well, that's. When are, you, when are you going to start a call-in show, brother? I want to. I really do. I need to figure out the logistics of it. And so like, I will, I will contact Jared out at Monster Bass, and I'll say, hey, our boy Thomas it was on the show the other day. He needs all out the information that. on how to do, you know, call-in show, and they'll hook you up. They'll tell you how to do it. Do they use StreamYard, or they're using um some software, right? They're using YouTube. Okay, because like yeah, and, and I can talk to them about it because like there's different little things on the back end. I think they possibly do, but that would help a lot. And then, so what I'm going to do, guys, is because this always gets shut off and then it gets re-uploaded, so I can polish it up right above. Right above my head will be um, the QR code. It'll be posted right now on that timestamp. So that way you can use your phone if you'd like to. Otherwise, I'll put a link in the episode description so you can click on it and go straight to everything that we talked about, of course, on every episode. Um, because, yeah, that's a really good cause to promote. And again, if you have a tournament and you're in the area or, you know, I know we're getting close to July. If this is something where it's like, you know what? We always have one every spring. It really sucks that we miss it. Still reach out to Marty because that could be something for next spring, too, that you get on the docket because... Yeah. There's a ton of veteran tournaments that go out of this area. So you got to find I actually know that there's a guy that holds a, in the area a veterans tournament every year on Veterans Day or Veterans Day weekend. Um, I got I got to find his information. I have it somewhere. I got to get a hold of him. But if anyone watching right now knows of this gentleman, he does it in Virginia. It is a it's a veterans tournament on Veterans Day weekend. I believe I would really like to get a hold of him, but please, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to plead donate to Mon monster bass cares. Um, and at any time, if you want information about, you know, so that we're legit account, what we're supporting, everything <laughs> this else. Is, it's not a Ponzi scheme. They are real. Yes. <laughs> I will give you every bit of information and what we're doing. Uh, and, and, yeah, I, I, I'll be my worst critic. You know, uh, we're, we're trying to do this. It's a learning process, um, but we're supporting these veterans and first responder tournaments. And I think it's just a blast to do. And I'm really enjoying it. Marty, thank you so much again for coming on the show. Again, guys, link in the episode description. This thing will be re-uploaded uh, on Wednesday with polished audio uh, for everyone's consumption. If you guys ever want to be on the show, anyone, please reach out to me, Instagram, email, whatever. I mean, I take everyone. You do not have to be a professional angler. I keep saying that to everyone. I want local knowledge. I want the people that have lived here their whole lives. Tell your story. Bring that out there. Uh, but again, until next time, I'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.